Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the online console video tutorials. This is tutorial number one. My name is Hot Dubber, and today what we're going to cover is the Sony PlayStation games. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to save your memory card files to your PC, uh, either your desktop or a folder of your choice, so that you can pick the games up at a later date. We're also going to cover the save state, which is another way of saving within the PlayStation emulator. And then we're also going to show you how to configure the keys or controllers whichever one you choose to use so first of all what we're going to do is head over to the Sony PlayStation section for this video tutorial we're going to be using WWF Smackdown 2 and navigate to Smackdown 2 you want to go ahead and close your advert I did say in the introductionary video that this website is funded uh, all the server costs, the website costs are all covered and funded via the adverts. This will save us from having to charge membership fees. So if you do use an ad blocker, then we'd kindly ask that you go ahead and whitelist us and give us your support. We'd appreciate it if you did that. So you will notice at the very top that our Java is out of date. That's so that we can show you some of the errors that you may encounter while using the website. Uh, if you want to go ahead and update Java before you want to play this game, then just click the update Java plugin and that will direct you to Java. But for this time, we're just going to click run. This is the first warning that you're going to come into contact with. Uh, this is a Java security warning asking you if we can have permission to run signed code, as in run programs from the Java cache. So you can click I accept and want to run if you don't want to see that message every time you boot a game you can click always trust content from this publisher and then you'll never have to see this again but for the time being we're just going to click accept and then run the blue button will now appear the blue button is the game launcher so let's go ahead and click the blue button so the game will load up just minimize this okay so before the emulator loads the first thing we're going to do is first step in the tutorial is we're going to cover the memory card so before the the game is actually loaded up we're going to go into the configuration and we're going to click memory cards now at the minute slot 1 and slot 2 are both saved into the temporary uh, the temporary cache which is the java cache so as soon as you close the emulator all the files with inside this folder will be removed uh, and if you've been saving your game states uh, and you want to continue at a later date then you're not going to want your save data to be removed so this is what we're going to do to get around that and save it to your desktop uh, first of all what we're going to do is we're going to click the desktop and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to click we're going to type in here memory card one okay uh, you all need to put dot bin because memory card files are saved as bin files so once you've named that whatever you want to name it doesn't have to be memory card 01 it could be anything you want you could name it smackdown you call it my card whatever you want to name it but once you've named it you want to click open and then you will see a link on your computer to where you've saved the the memory card file uh, if I just move this over here once I click apply you will then see the memory card file that's now appeared on the desktop now I'm going to show you again the slot 2 navigate from the temporary internet uh, folder over to here and we'll just call this card 2 don't forget to put dot bin then click open even though there's a not a file there it doesn't matter just name it click open and then click apply and now you will see card 2 right there so if we go ahead and click OK the game will continue loading up try and skip through this as quick as we can So now what it's going to do is it's going to check the memory card. 
now we have already just created these memory cards so the memory card is unformatted as it's just let you know in there and what we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, options and then we're going to tell it to save the game data the system data and then save system data so we want to save the system data and now it's going to tell us that the memory card is on format would you like to format the memory card and we're going to click yes Okay, so our newly created memory card has now been formatted and save data has been saved to it. So what I'm going to do now, just to show you, is I'm going to go to eject the CD and then I'm going to reset the PlayStation, which will take us to the old PlayStation interface, the dashboard, where you can manage the memory card. Okay, so there you go. If you go inside the memory card, you will now see the WWF icons down there in card 1 so you can copy them across to your card 2 or whatever it is you want to do and you can manage your memory card files there you can create a new memory card for each game you want to play or you can just save many games to that one memory card obviously to the amount of space it will uh, allow you to save to so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this we're going to go back to online console refresh the page I'm going to run this time and just repeat the steps that we've already taken and we're going to click this as if we're launching the game over again Okay, so before the game launches, we're going to click File, and we're going to click Configuration. Now, because you've rebooted the emulator again from scratch, from online console, it's going to go back to the default value. So you can see there, slot 1 and slot 2, they're selecting the memory cards that's inside the folder. So what you want to do is navigate back to the folder, which ours is the desktop, where you save the game, and it was memory card 1 that we saved for slot 1 and it was on the desktop it was card 2 that we saved it as for slot 2 so once you've then selected your memory cards you click apply and click OK now it's going to load your memory cards back up so once you've formatted it, you're not going to have to do it what, again. You're just going to be able to load your memory cards up, no matter what game it is you're playing. Create as many as you like. Now this should detect the memory card, check it, and then load in the settings. If we change any settings in the options, it would have saved them all. Same applies to any games that you might have been playing. I'll skip through this as quickly as we can. So there you go, it's now loading from your newly created and formatted memory card. Now there is an easier way to save uh, using the PlayStation emulator which I'm going to show you now um, which is save state so do, don't don't use the quick save option because the quick save option is going to save it to the temporary java cache which means you're going to lose anything that you do inside there what you want to do is go ahead and click file click save state so choose the folder which you want to save it to we're going to name this uh, playstation 
tut save one so once you've named it just click save and then if we go anywhere inside the game you know if we go into the rankings or where, wherever you are in the game even if you're actually playing the game and you, you, you're in the middle of a match it doesn't matter all you have to do is click file load state select the save state and click open oh, that was a later one that I'd already done so let's go back again and click load state there it is and that was the save state that we saved and it takes you right back to where you were so that's that's a much easier way an alternative to actually using the memory card file um, now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the configuration of your controllers so if you click configuration and you go to controllers this is where you can change all of the keys on the keyboard so if you was using and you had a controller plugged in which I actually don't at the minute uh, you can plug in a wired Xbox controller with the USB the wireless ones don't work you've got to have an actual USB uh, Xbox controller but if you had one plugged in you just be able to scroll down there you be able to select the device and then you just press the buttons and press the button like once it was highlighted you press the button on the controller and it said it uh, at the minute if you wanted to change you know your X button or whatever and you you prefer to use something like W I don't know why you use W but if you did you just highlight it and press W if you want to change the circular button then you just change that as well and once it's highlighted you can just press any button that you want okay so that's that's how you uh, configure your controller this this button here the type is the type of controller that you want that you're going to be using that you want to set up so if you selected the uh, analog plus rumble then it would give you more buttons to have to set up or the dual shot it give you the additional you know the uh, the thumb buttons so you just click that and then define where it is or what it is you, you want that button to do so that's it for the uh, PlayStation tutorials. My name is Hot Dubber. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, look out for future tutorials.